our final leg. It doesn't stop. We are here to recap the amazing Oslo Diamond League that just went down in Norway. We saw some top performances, some world leads by some great pros all across in the track and on the field. So let's take a look. We just saw Carson Warholm take the win in the men's 400 meter hurdles. He was going up against Kyron McMaster. Samba was also supposed to be in this race, but he pulled out last minute. We saw Warholm run 47.33. That's still the number two time in the world this year, but this was a huge improvement upon his personal best of 47.6 from last year. He makes him number two right behind Samba. That's a national record. Huge performance making him number 13 all time in the 400 meter hurdles. This is showing that it's not just a two person race. Of course we have Samba. Of course we have Benjamin. McMaster is a little behind right now, but Warholm is showing that he is not to be forgotten. He's the 2017 world champion and this shows that he is ready to really go for a defense of his title. Of course he's going to have a lot of competition, but he is going to be fighting for it. So keep a lookout for Warholm as the season progresses. We're going to see these guys all meet up together at one point, likely before the world championships in Doha. Now in the men's 100 meters, we have Christian Coleman. He was able to comfortably take the win in 9.85 seconds. That is a world leading performance. He was beat out by Noah Lyles earlier in the season. He had run 9.86, but this is the world lead. Of course, he's the 2017 silver medalist in the 100 meters. Last year, he ran his 9.79, so he is definitely on a roll. He is definitely really healthy. He's going to be a really, really strong contender going for that world gold in Doha later on this year, so keep a lookout for Coleman. He has a lot of competition. There is a couple guys who might be able to challenge him, but this is showing the separation between the rest of the field. 9.85 by Christian Coleman, really strong performance in Oslo. Now, in the women's 400 meter hurdles, we had Sydney McLaughlin take the win in 54.16. That's not a season's best for her. She had run 54.14 earlier in the season, but this is significant because she beat out Dalila Muhammad, Shamir Little, and Corey Carter, three of the best American women in the 400 meter hurdles. This shows that she can keep her own and hold her own with some of the best in the world. The last time that she actually lost a 400 meter hurdle race was back in 2017 at the US Trials going to the World Championships that year. So, so this is really significant. She's keeping her streak alive against some of the top ladies in the world. So keep a lookout for Sydney McLaughlin as the season progresses. Now in the men's 3,000 meters, we have Selman Bereka, who's one of the most dominant 5,000 meter runners that we have right now. In the 3,000, he was managed to take the win in 732.17. Personal best, world leading performance. He beat out a couple strong guys in that field. So keep a lookout for Bereka. He's definitely going to be going for that 5,000 meter title when we get to Doha later on this year. Now in the steeplechase, we had Nora Ruto of Kenya. She managed to take the win in 9 minutes, 3.71 seconds. That's a world leading performance. Huge, huge performance for her. She managed to beat out Chepkoic who ran 9 minutes, 4.30 seconds. So really, really strong performance from Jeruto. Of course, Chepkoic is the world record holder from last year and she's probably the one to beat going into world championships this year. But Jeruto was managed to get the best of her here. So keep a lookout for all the steeplechase ladies as we progress through the season. Now in the women's triple jump, we had Katarina Ibarguin. She's one of the strongest, not only triple jumpers but also long jumpers in the world she managed to get the world leading performance of 14.79 meters great performance from her of course we're missing Yulamar Rojas who is one of the stronger triple jump competition that Ibarguen has but Ibarguen is showing that she's really consistent she's still not to be forgotten even though she's a little older than some of the other competition she is definitely still the queen of the triple jump right now so keep a lookout for Ibarguen and hopefully if Rojas gets healthy again we're going to see a great duel between these two when we get to Doha later on this year now in the women's high jump. We had Maria Lasiskene of Russia, of course, one of the most dominant high jumpers that we've had in the past couple years. She managed to take the win in 2.01 meters. Great performance from her. She's showing that she's going to be able to continue her dominance. Hopefully, she's going to be going to defend her title in Doha in the high jump. There's a couple ladies that are really going to be creeping up on her. Lasiskene has taken a couple losses and breaking her streak that she's had over the past couple years, but she is still going to be the most dominant high jumper and the favorite going into Doha. So keep a lookout for Lasiskene. So those are just some of the highlights from the Oslo Diamond League that just capped off in Norway. So make sure you guys check out the results. There's some other performances by some top pros that just went down as well. We are going to see the Rabat Diamond League going down on Sunday in Morocco. So some really, really strong matchups that we see that are going to be going down there. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys like the video and leave a comment on your favorite performance from the Oslo Diamond League. And we'll be back again very soon. Thanks.